Okay, so we're going to look in um, a little bit more at London dispersion forces because uh, London dispersion forces, um, they do happen in all molecules because all molecules have electrons, so therefore all of those electrons can be moving around and can create these momentary dipoles, which allow them to attract to other molecules. Um, but also it allows us to look at nonpolar uh, molecules and determine their strengths. Um, and so we can really look at a nonpolar molecule um, and determine how strong is its London dispersion force and figure out things like its boiling point or its melting point um, based off of how strong this force is. And so the first thing we're going to look at is polarizability. Polarizability is the ability to create that instant dipole. Um, and I think this kind of makes a lot of sense. If you have a lot of electrons, so the more electrons you have, um, the more able you are to create that polarizability or that positive or negative charge, a partial positive or partial negative charge. Um, so more electrons, more charges can be creative, created, um, therefore you can have a greater or stronger London dispersion force. So if we take a look at these two molecules, we've got um, I2 and F2. So if iodine is bonded to another iodine, show all your electrons there, versus fluorine bonded to another fluorine. Um, they're both just these single bonds and they look really similar. But if you look into it, um, iodine is number nine on the periodic table and only in the second energy level, while iodine is number 53, I might be wrong, it could be 54, on the periodic table, um, and is down in the sixth energy level. So iodine is much bigger. Um, if it has up to 53 electrons, um, it has way more electrons to create way more dipoles than fluorine who only has nine electrons. So this is a larger atom, therefore it has more electrons, versus a smaller atom with fewer electrons, meaning that iodine is going to have a greater London dispersion force. So that also means a couple other things. It's going to have a greater melting point and a greater boiling point um, because there are more forces keeping those two iodines attracted to another set of iodines. Um, and then we've also got surface area. So surface area will also determine the strength of a London dispersion force. Um, surface area is kind of like places. Think about it as how many places do you have to stick another molecule to? So the more surface area you have, the greater the London dispersion forces you will have because you have more places to stick molecules together. Um, and so if we look at these three pictures, like this number one, number two, and number three, um, if you were to measure out the perimeter of all of them, you could determine the surface area. Um, and one definitely has the biggest surface area. So one has the largest surface area. Therefore, it's going to have the largest London dispersion force. And the highest melting point and boiling point. All right, there is that. Um, there are three practice problems, so give those three problems a try, and then we will talk about uh, what their answers are on Wednesday. Have a great day.